Hello everyone, it's Professor Rako here again, and today we are starting a new chapter. This chapter is the uh, Current Liabilities and Contingencies chapter. I believe in both your Spiceland and your uh, Kiso book, it's both chapter 13. Uh, so we'll get going uh, right away. So if, uh, just to define it, your book definition is just a liability is just a, you know, kind of key things here is a probable future sacrifice of economic benefits. All right, so it's arising from present obligations, meaning something that's happening now, uh, and yet are going to transfer assets or provide services uh, as a result of past transactions or events. All right, so, you know, we all know about accounts payable, and, you know, those are your kind of your basic liabilities. Uh, liabilities all have three traits. Okay, they are, pre and look, anytime you see something like this where there's three traits, uh, this is always a good multiple choice question. All right. Uh, you know, which one of the following or which one is not, something like that. So anytime you see three or four like bullet points or number things uh, in your book or anything like that, you should be thinking multiple choice question. But it's a present obligation, okay, that will be settled by future transfer of cash, goods, or services. It's unavoidable, and it has already occurred. All right, so that's kind of your three main things there. All right, so a current liability is expected to be settled through the use of current assets, and this is usually cash, right? You know, if we borrow money or we buy something on account, we pay it off with cash. Or possibly the creation of other current liabilities. And we'll see an example of that when we do our notes payable uh, section. All right, so current liabilities are generally recorded at full maturity value in the financial statements because the difference between the present value and the maturity value is deemed in material because these are current liabilities. We're not dealing with like long-term debt or anything like that yet. That will be in a, a next chapter. Uh, they can be ordered by maturity amount or in the order of uh, liquidation preference on your balance sheet. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, and then also, also disclosures uh, should include the secured liabilities, meaning if it's backed by something, and so and what is the collateral that is pledged. Uh, contingency disclosures, which is the second half of the chapter, which we'll get to in a, little, in a future uh, video. Uh, basically, must the disclosure must include the nature of the contingency as well as an estimate of the possible loss or range of losses. So we'll talk about how to measure those when we get to that section. All right, so when you look at your textbook, what you'll find, whether regardless of which book you're using, you'll just see a list of, they're, they're the first, you know, there's several different types of payables, or li I guess I should say current liabilities. And so what I'm gonna do is walk through some of them now. I took the notes payable out, and I'm gonna do that in a separate video as well as some of the other ones. So we'll just kind of go through some of these that are pretty straightforward. All right, so everybody's familiar with accounts payable, right? So accounts payable uh, is just amounts owed uh, to others for goods, supplies, uh, or services purchased on account. I mean, you know, even in your financial class, you bought inventory on account. You did that entry a hundred times, okay? Uh, now look, when you do it, you know, the other side of that is accounts receivable, right? So if I buy something on account, I owe money, but that means it's a receivable on some of these other books. All right, so if you think back to your receivable chapter, you did all this stuff with bad debts, the allowance for doubtful accounts, because remember, you were estimating what you thought people were going to pay you. Now, with accounts payable, you don't do that because you don't go into a transaction saying, OK, I'm not going to pay all this back. You're assuming that you will pay it all back. So the accounting is straightforward. You record the liability uh, when you incur it, and then you pay, when you pay it off, you take it off the books. All right, dividends payable is another one. So dividends are the amount owed to shareholders due to the declaration, and that's kind of the key word, uh, becomes a liability when they're declared by the board of directors. So on the date of direct declaration, the company is legally liable to pay the dividends, so they must record the liability. Uh, and typically, uh, you will have either like a dividends declared or possibly retained earnings uh, debited there and dividend payable. It just depends. Some books, I uh, remember dividends are closed out to retained earnings. So sometimes uh, I've seen some books where they'll just automatically debit retained earnings here to lower it. And then some will use the dividend account uh, and then later close that out to retained earnings when you do your closing entries, uh, which is something you would have covered in intermediate one. Customer advances and deposits, these are just payments to guarantee performance of a contract or service to guarantee the coverage of future payments. All right, so whether it's current or non-current depends on the time between the deposit and the termination of the relationship that required that deposit. Uh, another one is unearned revenues. So this should have been covered probably, it's either chapter two, three, four, it's one of those first chapters when you do all the adjusting journal entries. Uh, but that's when you receive cash. So this is receiving cash before the delivery of goods. 
or services. The opposite of that is prepaid expenses, which are assets, so unearned revenues or liability. So sometimes students get confused with that because they see the word revenue and they think it's, you know, she goes on the income statement. But remember, unearned revenues or liabilities. You'll also see this called deferred revenues on some books. I believe the Spicel book calls it deferred revenues. All right, so either of those terms are fine. All right, but they're liabilities because we owe something. All right, so common ones are unearned rent revenue. So if somebody pays their rent in advance, so if somebody pays us rent in advance, we get cash and we would credit unearned rent revenue. All right, so this is a liability that would be on our balance sheet. All right, and then as the time goes by and they earn that, then we take, we'll debit unearned rent revenue to take it off the books and have actual rent revenue recognized. Okay, and then this would go into our income statement, making up our uh, calculation of net income. All right, so make sure you see that. So unearned just means uh, we have to do something. Uh, unearned sales means somebody could pay for something in advance. That means we have to provide them with that. So it's a liability. All right, another liability, sales tax payable. All right, so remember, when you go shopping uh, and you pay stuff, you pay the tax on it. Now look, you're, not, you're paying the tax to the company, but that money does not belong to the company. The tax belongs to the government, all right? So a lot of times in accounting, we kind of gloss over this when we have a sale. Uh, but the taxes are recorded as a liability on the company's books because they then have to turn – they're essentially collecting it on your behalf and then turning around and sending it to the uh, government. All right, so your basic entry would be, you know, be cash or accounts receivable. Uh, let's just say it was 10 and then would have uh, sales revenue for nine and sales tax payable for one. All right. So remember that this is the total amount that this is the total amount paid. All right. So when you go to the store and you pay, you're paying the total amount of what you purchase plus the sales tax, all right? So this is the liability that they have to then turn around and pay to the government, whether it's local, state, uh, whatever the case, however they have to do it. All right, income tax payable, all right? This is taxes due based uh, on difference between financial accounting and uh, your tax accounting. There's a whole chapter devoted to that, so we'll cover that uh, in great detail when we get to the uh, deferred tax chapter. Uh, current maturities of long-term debt. So as uh, so, if we just read through here, so that's the portion of the long-term debt that is due in the current period, meaning in the next 12 months. All right. So the current the portion due in the next 12 months would be broken out of the long-term liability and put in the current portion, and the remainder would be in long-term. So each year you can think a new 12, the next 12 months gets moved into current until it's finally all paid off. All right. Uh, and last one, short-term obligations expected to be refine, uh, refinanced, all right? So the question is whether they are current or not. They may exclude from current liabilities, notice, if both of these are met. And the main things are they intend to refinance and have the ability to refinance, all right? So these are a lot of different things. So, you know, for me, when I'm testing on this, you know, a lot of this stuff is covered in multiple choice, all right? Uh, so, you know, you kind of have to, you know, gauge how your teacher is teaching it to you and see what they're stressing. Uh, they might even skip some of these uh, or not cover them in detail, uh, or they might go into more detail on some of them. So you kind of just have to pay attention to what they're expecting out of you. Uh, but, you know, your bigger problems from this chapter that you're going to see if you have a problem portion of the exam are probably like your notes payable, which we'll cover in uh, a future uh, video coming up, or like warranties from the contingency section or asset retirement obligations or, you know, things like that. So we will get to all those. So I wanted to do all these first, and then we can focus on some of the bigger problems in the upcoming videos from this chapter. All right. So I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, please subscribe, share with your friends, uh, you know, especially as you get closer to test time. Uh, and hopefully uh, these are helping you out. Thanks.